Welcome to this presentation about using artificial intelligence to detect and cure breast cancer. To detect. So the problem to be inv to be investigated is uh, the fact that during the diagnosis of cancer, on especially breast cancer, physicians usually find it hard. They find it hard to pinpoint whether a, a particular tumor or group of cells is cancerous or not cancerous. And so with the use of AI, we can do it more efficiently and effectively. So tumors develop when cells start multiplying at an abnormal rate. And if these cells turn out to be cancerous, and that's how you end up having a cancerous tumor or a malignant tumor. So once the tumor develops, it, the next step is to check whether it's cancerous or not cancerous, whether the cells are cancerous or not. And it's really crucial this step because some cells are in uh, what we call invasive, others are non-invasive. Invasive cells can spread to other body organs and spread the cancer. Non-invasive stay in that body organ or a particular tissue and infect it alone. So that's why identification and early diagnosis is really important and hence the use of AI and machine learning. The significance of this is because there are well over 100 types of cancer and cancer is a very terrible terminal disease. The world of statistics says 7.7 .7 million people died from cancer in 2020 alone. And cancer is really one of the major types of illnesses that are responsible for the deaths of many women because this even, even before diagnosis is uh, brought into consideration, the amount of pain and suffering it brings to a person is too much. And even the fact that it's incurable once it has developed. And so we really need to pay attention to early diagnosis and detection. The scope of this project is uh, using the project is using numeric data. The data is going to be obtained using a technique known as radiomics analysis. It's uh, the process by which descriptive data or any types of data are obtained from medical images. So red, uh, after radio imaging, the process whereby we take uh, detailed pictures of certain cells or bones or body parts or tissues, radiomics analysts come in and for this case measure the dimensions of the cells in target such as the area, the perimeter, concavity, the texture and the algorithms we're going to use to process, classify and analyze this data uh, such as logistic regression, support vector machine and case nearest neighbors. With those, we shall classify, group, and analyze the various data we have, and we will be able to develop a classification, a classification program whereby the program will be fed new data and based on what it has learned, it will be able to tell whether a particular cell or group of cells is cancerous or non-cancerous. We also have the stacking ensemble algorithm that's going to be used to combine the results from the three algorithms, case nearest neighbor, support vector machine, and logistic regression. And with the stacking ensemble, we'll combine the results, come up with an independent model that will also be used to test just to be foolproof and accurate. Afterwards, we shall develop what is known as a confusion matrix. Confusion matrix used to show, just to show relations between actual actual tests, actual results, and the test results. So as you can see here, we have actual benign or actual non-cancerous cells and actual malignant or actual non-cancerous cells, yeah? And then at the top, we would have what the algorithm has brought back and we'll have to go compare so that we can be able to get its accuracy, its F1 score, its, its precision, and its recall. The problem statement again is stemming from the abnormal development of cells to produce tumors, which tumors can be cancerous or non-cancerous. And 
Master Chi must develop the next step is to classify and identify those that are cancerous so that effective treatment and actions can be taken immediately. Our next slide here shows AI model interpretability. Now, interpretability is the ability to understand the value and the accuracy of research findings. It's important that researchers and the users of this research are able to interpret what you have done or what we are doing. And to do that, we're going to use a technique As I was saying, AI model interpretability, it's important to be able to analyze and understand what's going on in a research or the results of a research so that they can measure the effects of trade-offs in a model. One such method of doing this, we're going to use feature importance. Feature importance is a method whereby we, we allocate or assign scores to the particular features or to the features being used to develop the model so that we know which features are important and which features are not so important. And the higher the score our features get, the more it will affect the, the results of the model, as we're going to see. The data set, the data set we're going to use is mainly and only numeric data. Some of this data is the area, perimeter, concavity, compactness, symmetry, fractal dimension, of all the cells, we're going to get a group of cells and we'll divide them into classes, which will be cancerous and non-cancerous. And that will be our training data. We'll also have a set of testing data. Using the training data, we shall train the model so that it can be able to identify what does a cancerous cell look like, what does a non-cancerous cell look like. And so after that, with the testing data, we shall see if in fact it's accurate with all the different algorithms we're going to use plus the stacking ensemble, of course. The methodology, we're going to use the logistic regression, support vector machine and the case nearest neighbors to carry out the detection and, an and analysis. Afterwards, we shall combine all the results and develop an independent model using stacking ensemble after which we shall still train and test using this model and I mentioned feature importance. We're going to use feature importance to interpret the model and its results. As you can see, it's a technique that calculates a score for all the input features for a given model. And the scores represent the importance. How crucial is it? How important is it? How much is it going to affect the results of the model? We shall use an application called Gradio. It's used to see in real time how much a certain feature can see can affect the results of a model so you can we can make changes as we see how the results, like the output accuracy changes. These are some of the references used in making this presentation and this research. Thank you. And see you next time.